Remarkable state of affairs at home too. Let's return now to Tana Poor. I'm going to switch my cameras because I have two guests in the studio who uh, won his court case today, challenging the $2.5 million in compensation he was paid by the government for wrongful imprisonment. Mr Poor spent more than two decades in jail for the 1992 rape and murder of Susan Burdett, which he didn't commit. He asked the court to review his compensation because it was not adjusted for inflation. Mr Poor is lawyer, Jonathan Krebs, and investigator Tim McKinnell, who really is responsible for setting this whole thing going and getting Tana Pora out of jail. Join us in the studio now. Thank you both for being here. Pleasure, John. A couple of things. First of all, there are two of our team missing. We've yes. got to acknowledge them. Ingrid Squire, who really wanted to be here but couldn't be, and, um, and Jerry McCoy, who's and been a marvellous help. And Jerry, Jerry did work in court on this case, didn't he? Well, we both did. Yes, yeah, 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 we both did. We both did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let, let's talk about what this means. So this was $100,000 a year, which was set in ninety four, wasn't yes. it? And as we all know, 23 years on $100,000 is not worth as much as it was in 1994 in terms of spending power. Correct. So you said it had to be inflation adjusted, and Justice Ellis has said... Justice, uh, Justice Ellis has said yes, um, that the Cabinet didn't have the right information before it, when it made the decision not to inflation adjust and has sent it really back for Cabinet to reconsider it. I think it's the, the, the fairest way of deciding it. But what we have to remember is that the recommendation that the that Cabinet sought from retired Justice Hanson, uh, in, uh, the opinion that came back from him was that to not inflation adjust would be anomalous and unjust would be unfair as between so, people. So when I mean, Justice Ellis said that Cabinet didn't have the right recommendation before it, hmm. what, 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 what were they working off? Well, it seems that the advice that was uh, given to the Ministry by Justice Hanson didn't find its way through the Minister's office to Cabinet. And so... Uh, and, and Justice Ellis is explicit about this. I've had a high-speed re read of this, and she's quite explicit. She says, look, it's not the decision that was faulty, it was the advice that was faulty. It's abundantly clear on the papers. Yes, so, yeah. so who's responsible for the advice? Well, um, I suppose it comes back to the Ministry. Quite extraordinary state of affairs. Mm. So what happens now? Does Cabinet have to act, uh, act on Justice Ellis's recommendations? Will Tana Porter, Porter's compensation get an inflation adjustment? What Cabinet's now required to do is to, uh, if the Minister thinks it's appropriate, uh, <coughs> Cabinet will need to reconsider it. Of course, the Minister can simply say, we accept that uh, we are wrong and we did have the power to inflation adjust and we're now going to do that and uh, we agree to do that uh, immediately. I mean, she can do that and we think that that's what she should do. Jonathan, I want to come back to you in a moment mm. and talk about what this means as a precedent. Yes. Because this is the High Court ruling on Cabinet decision, mm. isn't it? And so this yeah. is a big, big thing. But Tim McGinnell, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking none of this would be happen happening. In fact, Tana Pora would not have probably got parole yet. He would still be in jail were it not for you sitting there thinking to yourself, this guy didn't do it. This is an extraordinary day for you, isn't it? It is. It's an extraordinary day. It's, um, you know, it's it, there's mixed feelings, to be honest, John. Um, you know, we've had to fight and scrap mm. every step of the way. The Crown has resisted everything, everything, from Tainer's innocence to his compensation claim and now to the inflation adjustment. And so much of that was unnecessary. And so I'm relieved and pleased for Tainer. I'm, I'm thrilled and very grateful to Jonathan, Jared and Ingrid. But, you know, I'm, I'm also a little bit bitter that we've had to fight every step of the way. It's been unnecessary. And in the context of what Jonathan was saying about uh, the recommendation from, from Justice Hanson... Uh, it felt churlish, didn't it, not going with the, uh, with the inflation recommendation, which was actually explicitly advanced as the right thing to do. Mm. That's right. And I've got, you know, I've, I, I guess over the years I've, I've formed some views about why Tane has been treated the way he's been treated. And what are those views? Well, I suspect a poor brown kid from South Auckland is, is easy to dismiss, and that's what's happened to him for nearly a quarter of a century. And so that's why I'm so proud of, of the legal team and the fight they've put up for him, because um, he, he was one of those powerless people in society and, and he's been given his power and his mana back. How, how is he? Because he is... Life is tough for Tainer, isn't it? It's still tough. He struggles every day and, um, you know, he's got challenges and we, you know, we try and keep him away from the spotlight to some extent because uh, life's not easy for him and he doesn't really know how to live in the, in the outside mm. world. Mm. Jonathan Krebs, what happens now? Because this is really interesting as a much broader precedent than simply looking at inflation, isn't it? In the, the result, of the, the, result yeah. of the case for Tate is simply that the Cabinet must now go back and, and look at it again. Uh, <clears throat> speaking more broadly, however, from an administrative law point of view, this is really quite an enormous decision because what it says is that decisions of Cabinet can be reviewed uh, when Cabinet's making decisions against a set of guidelines or criteria, as they were doing here. And so uh, a previous authority that says that uh, the High Court can't 
interfere with what cabinet decided have been overturned. Yes, extraordinary. And it, it, it's new. Yeah. It's a new world as far as challenging what it, cabinet... It's new and big. And very big, yeah. How are you both feeling now? Because this is it really, isn't it? This is the end of it. I mean, surely Cabinet are going to act on the recommendation of Justice Ellis. Well, I hope it doesn't go to Cabinet, John, to be honest. I mean, on one analysis, it's so abundantly clear. Uh, Her Honour's decision uh, combined with, with Rodney Hansen's mm. report uh, <clears throat> together. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. The Minister, if she wanted to, in our view, can say... Can have a media conference tomorrow. And say, well, we'll pay. Yeah. I guess she has to talk to Cabinet now, but you would expect she to see, she, you'd expect to see that next week. She's a fair woman. Let's hope she does. OK, nice pitch to her. Tim McKinnell, last word to you. When did you first sit there and think, oh, holy moly, this guy isn't the man? When was that? Late 2008, so nine, nine years ago. It's been a long nine years, and you were a voice in the wilderness for a long time, weren't you? Yeah, with Jonathan and I in particular, but it was, it was a long time before anybody was really listening, but most people are now. And you must feel, and I know that you uh, don't deal in pride, but you must feel proud of what you have achieved together, you, me, and Ingrid. Mm. Here we are. It is, yeah. But it's, it's a great feeling to actually have, have succeeded and brought this, uh, this terrible case of injustice through to a case of justice. Tim McInnell, do you want to say something? You, uh, you're buggered, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. And that's, you know, part of that frustration's bubbling over now. I just want this to be over, properly over, um, for, for Tana. And then, and then we can start talking about what happens. And the right thing to be done. Exactly. Tim McKinnell and Jonathan Krebs, thank you so much for joining us live beside me with our magnificent wooden desk. It's a beautiful desk, <laughs> too. A beautiful thank you very much for having us. <laughs> and and thank you for your yeah. interest in this well, uh, throughout. Yeah, it's always it's been, been a, a privilege to work with uh, men of great e e ethics and decency. Thank, thank you, you both. Very kind. <laughs>